geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to a brand new edition of Geek to Me Radio. Today we are live with the brand manager for Boulevard Brewery, Adam Hall, talking about their brand new IPAs. I mean, we all even have a chance to win one. Later on, we'll have Harvest Chena and Yuri Lowenthal live talking about their upcoming projects, all that and more. So stand by. around the greater St. Louis area tonight, hearing us on the big 550 KTRS. Thank you very much for tuning in and making us part of your Sunday. If you're watching this stream on Instagram or YouTube or Twitch or Facebook, hello to you and thanks very much for tuning in. We have a jam-packed show, so we're going to dive right to it. My first guest is the brand manager for Boulevard Brewery. We uh, got connected with them at Planet Comic Con because they had this awesome booth set up promoting their space camper, Cosmic IPA Universe, and Adam Hall's with us right now. Adam, thanks for the time tonight. Hey, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Of course. So uh, right off, one of the first questions I had when I was talking to uh, one of the other show hosts in the studio, he said, hey, could you make sure that he explains what an IPA is? Because evidently this guy who I was talking to knows, but every time he says IPA, people are like, well, what is that? So let's start at the very beginning. <laughs> Wait, go ahead and explain sure. what an IPA is. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it depends on how far back you want to go. Um, so IPA, the, the word, the letters stand for India Pale Ale. And it, uh, the roots can be traced back to the English colonization of India. They used to send beer from England to India, and it would take a long time to get there. The beer would go bad. They realized the hops was um, kind of like a, a preservative, so they would add extra hops into the barrel, send those ships to India, and by the time it got there, the beer was at least safe to drink. And then when the colonists came back to the U.K., they were uh, really fond of this big, hoppy, bitter style of the English pale ale. The breweries weren't making it because they were it was for export only. And then they said, well, there's enough people here that are asking for it. So they started hopping their, their traditional beers. And they put that word India to kind of put a crowbar of separation between their, you know, the very austere uh, traditional English style pale ale and then this brand new style that had big hops to it. And so they called it the India pale ale. So whenever you see IPA or India pale ale, what you're getting in for is a, uh, is a beer that has a higher hop presence. And sometimes that's hop aroma, sometimes it's hop flavor, and sometimes it's bitterness. And when you're coming out with these new ones, these new profiles for the Space Camper, which, uh, again, for those of you who are watching, we've got a little pack of it right here. We have, uh, we're going to be giving this away later on in the show. If you stay with us, we'll have a trivia question for one of our other guests. And if you call in and get the answer right, we'll give away this pack right here of their Cosmic IPA. When you're launching a new brand like this, this has been out uh, for about a year now. Is that correct? Yeah, so Space Camper came out in 2019, actually. And oh, it, wow. was, uh, it was a, a direct result of our experiences sampling beer at Planet Comic Con in 2018. We went through a heck of a lot of beer, and then the uh, following week we came back and said we want to make a beer that was kind of targeted towards people like, like me um, who wanted to go attend Planet Comic Con, attend the panels, but then also have a beer that spoke to me. And we had this really great IPA in the beer hall that was kind of a test beer, and then one of our designers had been flirting around with these really great Silver Age kind of comic book uh, yeah. cover styles for... And so the, the two kind of married together very well. We launched it in 2019, and um, it has quickly become our third most, our third biggest volume beer that we do, which is, wow. uh, is kind of insane. We've been making beer since 30 years, so uh, it caught on very quickly. And I will say, I went around to a couple different stores to try to find some of the space campers so I could have a package to give away on the air tonight. And a lot of places were sold out. They said, yeah, it, it goes off the shelves as soon as we get it in. So that's very impressive as well. Oh, I really like hearing that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and we're working on making more. Um, as you, you know, when you came to Planet, you saw what we call the SCU or the Space Camp Camper Universe because our brewers realized that. Uh, so, Space Camper, the Cosmic IPA, the original one, is uh, it focuses, uh, uses a hop variety called the El Dorado, which presents a lot of fruits like watermelon, grapefruit, kind of passion fruit. Uh, but there's thousands of hop varieties in the world. And so, our brewers said, well, we want to make another IPA uh, that has different variations. Our different characteristics, and we really like this idea of building our own kind of um, comic universe. 
Yeah. So this past year, we've had other beers under the Space Camper label. Uh, just really the biggest difference is the way that we make it with the hop. So in the early part of the year, we had a beer called Giga Hop. And that we called it Giga Hop. It was a robot, but it was... Um, we used hops from uh, both the northern and southern hemisphere, and kind of we called it a semi-hemisphere IPA. Uh, and so we were able to play around with these brandings to kind of create these really cool comic book narrative style uh, backgrounds. Because you know we make plenty of beers for for people at sports bars, but we wanted to have uh, beers that um, people could speak to at like an esports arena as well. Yeah, that makes perfect or sense. Comic Con. Yeah. yeah. And you've got the whole, uh, so you've got the Space Camper Cosmic. Uh, there's the Giga Hop that you mentioned, uh, the Delta Ray Hazy Intergalactic, the Nova Flare West, and the, the character designs on each one of these cans is just so incredible. It looks like, like you said, jumped right out of a Silver Age comic book. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're glad you like that, especially, um, so Giga Hop, I think, was more towards, you know, we were looking at, um, and originally we were like, how could these beers fit together? So we put Giga Hop as, a, as like, maybe it's like a Voltron. Maybe at the end of the year, all these beers fit together. <laughs> but then we realized we wanted to have um, really the characters be the stronger identity. So I think there will be future robots in the lineup. But yeah, then Delta Ray and then Nova Flare, you can kind of see is really our homage to, uh, you know, to like Back to the Future. I mean, the hoverboard is just such a classic piece of pop culture. We wanted to work that in somewhere. And so Nova Flare being a West Coast IPA, we wanted to give her this west coast avenger kind of a uh, you know like persona yeah. so you know she's a techie she rides a hoverboard uh you know she's you know doing the hang loose with her fingers so really kind of uh really kind of coasting into those west coast vibes while also you know leaning into the to the nerd and all of us and then you've got the major volta imperial ipa and that it says on the little sheet you sent me it's a limited release for july if, if that's the case if it's something that i didn't see it today when i was out looking in this weekend browsing is it probably already gone you know, probably that's kind of the, that's also the nature of IPAs. Um, so when we talk about how beer breaks down and it goes bad, the mm -hmm. first thing to fall out of a beer is the hop flavor, hop aroma, and when that hop drops out of a beer, it presents flavors that you know. You know well, some people might say not bad, but it's not what we intended. So a lot of these beers have really short shelf lives, which lends themselves really well to, to limited releases. I would guess that somewhere in the great state of Missouri, there is a liquor store that probably still has Major Volta uh, on the shelves. But uh, I know locally it has kind of come and gone. But Major Volta is interesting, too, because, you know, every hero needs a villain or an anti-hero. So, you know, it just kind of made sense to make this Imperial IPA. And it goes back to just in beer in general, the term beer, uh, Imperial means something that's bigger or maybe more intense. And we're like, well, that is just an incredible style for a villain. So the pack is different. It's all black. You know, she, um, it's a she, by the way, Major Volta is a girl. And as it turns out, you know, next year when we release the comic book, uh, Major Volta is actually Space Camper's twin sister. You know, oh, they were separated early. Yeah. Twist. We have a whole narrative behind all of these, all of these ladies. And so you mentioned the Voltron aspect earlier. I'm picturing there's somebody out there, Inventive is going to make like all these cans formed into like a giant robot with the, you know, the Nova Flare arms and the Delta Ray legs and everything like that. I can kind of picture some ingenious nerd already putting that together in their basement. I can definitely dream. <laughs> now, are these something that, like, each year the art will change on the can? So it's kind of like if you have their first edition can, some people collect stuff and they save things like that. Is it, will the art change year by year? Yeah, that's kind of why it was, you know, it was designed that way. Um, to, you kind of think of, like, uh, collector cards or... Um, now, some of them will come back in, like, our mix pack next year. So if, if someone didn't get a chance to get GigaHop, we can brew a smaller uh, amount of it and then put it into a variety pack. So there'll be a second opportunity for anybody who may have missed it, but um, the art will stay the same. But as we continue releasing new beers, we will have new characters, new identities, uh, like I said, another robot. Uh, so they're going to continue to change. And, and really the only way they would come back is if we brought them back in a limited release or in a gift pack or a variety pack that would showcase all of the fan favorites. And I, I don't know if it's like... With G.I. Joe, obviously, they always do the three-pong attack. There's the toy, the comic, and the cartoon. So you've got the toy, basically, which is the beer. Is there going to be a comic book and maybe a cartoon at the end of all this, possibly? <laughs> uh, you know what? There actually is. So yes, um, we, cool. we, Yeah, we're, so we're, uh, we sponsor um, a, another terrific podcast called First Issue Club. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but they're in Kansas yeah, City. Yeah, yeah, I've heard um, of them. But, yeah, so, so we, they're the official, um, well, Space Camper is the official beer, first issue, and um, we've been working pretty closely with those guys to find, because Kansas City is also home to some fantastic comic creators, both writers and artists, oh, so yeah. we're, uh, we, we want to get everyone together, kind of sit down in a room, and really flesh out what this universe is. I mean, we have a narrative that we laid out, but listen, I make beer, I don't write comic books, 
uh, or write stories. So um, I just, I'm a fan, uh, a tremendous fan. So we want to get these people who have real talent together and kind of build uh, a, a whole or picture, a whole story, a bigger story with all of these characters that we've really put a lot of energy in designing and developing. And one of the cool things I want to mention, too, is that there's uh, something Boulevard's doing. They're donating 7% of all space camper profits to carefully chosen organizations that seek to preserve our precious and fragile home, pulling plastic from the ocean, planting trees from sea to shining sea. That's a great thing, too, that you're, you know, you're making sure these superheroes who are on your beer brands are giving back. Yeah, so we, you know, we're, we're uh, like hyper aware that everything that goes into making beer comes from the earth. And so Boulevard as a company, we've always kind of worked with local um, uh, it, like companies that also strive to protect the environment, um, glass recycling solutions, stuff like that. But we thought that Space Camper was a really good opportunity for us to broaden our reach. So we've worked with um, we Ripple Glass here in Kansas City. We've worked with the Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, so far, I think we've planted like something like 40,000 trees using wow. Space Camper. Um, and that's nationwide. So we look for places like, um, you know, like California, there's a lot of fire reforestation efforts. So we can kind of like spend towards that to kind of repair and replenish. And then, you know, that's California is also where a lot of our hops come from that would go into Space Camper. So it's important that we take care of these environments uh, and not just here, but worldwide as well. So it's kind of our way of giving back while also, you know, save the earth. It's the only planet with beer. That's our tagline. <laughs> that's very true. And then we know right now, who knows if some other advanced yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but they wouldn't be advanced if they didn't have beer. So that's that's what we're really getting at here. But, uh, yeah, right. the Space Camper Cosmic IPA Universe, you can check it out. Um, I would highly recommend getting these. Like I said, we're going to give away one of these on the air. If you can find it in your area, kudos to you. Grab some and try it because uh, I had a couple of these different ones, and it, they're really flavorful. They're really good. And where can people find you, Adam, if they want to keep up with what you're doing and keep up with Boulevard in general? Yeah, so, you know, what I would say is um, Boulevard on all channels is just Boulevard underscore beer. Uh, that's at um, our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And then also our website, uh, boulevard.com, has a beer finder that's tied really closely to all of our retailers and our wholesalers. So if you are looking for Space Camper, if you want to give these a shot, just go to boulevard.com, find our beer finder, type in your zip code, and it will let you know within 10-mile radius if a retailer near you has picked this up and has it available. Fantastic. And I'm assuming, uh, like, I know a couple of liquor stores by me, if you go up and ask very nicely, hey, can you get this in? Especially if you're in the greater St. Louis area, Boulevard being in Kansas City, they will probably be able to get it in fairly easily for you as well. Absolutely. That very is nice. absolutely the case. Adam Hall, I appreciate your time. Brand manager for Boulevard Beer, taking time to chat IPAs with us tonight. Uh, thank you so much and be well. We hope to have you back on soon. Anytime, anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you. There he goes. Uh, again, check out Boulevard. It's a really cool product and all the things they're doing there. They're uh, local to the Midwest area here, which is also very cool. We're going to take our first commercial break. I can see them standing by in chat right now. We've got Parvish and Yuri waiting. Stand by. Hey, guys, this is Kari Payton. I play Cyborg on Teen Titans Go. Booyah! And get ready for some Geek to Me radio. I hear it's real good. back on the big 550 ktrs uh we've got two guests on one has been on before but i've never had the pleasure of chatting with the other one so we've got yuri lowenthal and parvish china both on if you're watching this if you're streaming this you should be able to see them both in the feed if you're listening on ktrs if you turn to your left as you go down highway 270 there they are right there uh yuri and parvish <laughs> thank you so much for doing this tonight this is great to talk to you both uh thank hi, you hi. for giving us an excuse to uh catch up yeah, in public with friends. Yeah, Parvish <laughs> and I haven't seen each other in way too long. So yeah, five years, three, four. Mm, five. Uh, real maybe. Pandemic wow. doesn't count. So like we add two, subtract yeah. two years from everything. So right, I would still say about three or four. Yeah, so probably five or six. Yeah, that, right. oh, that I, I like sense, that idea. Pandemic doesn't count. I, I can get on board with that. So I know we were going back and forth and I'm not, I had Yuri on and then Parvish mm -hmm. and I started following each other on Twitter and I can't remember yeah. how it came about, but we just kind of like, oh, we should have you both on. So I didn't know how you guys knew each other. So would you like to tell the story uh, for me as well as the listeners, how you guys met? Can sure. I start, Yuri? Yes, start? yes, yes. Okay. So we're, we're um, Los Angeles based Southern California actors. And um, this was a thing like, especially can we say this? Like, I guess two decades ago, 
technically, yeah, right? The 20, 2000s. Wow. Like, yeah, you know, like so. the end of the Bush, W. Bush era. Like, yeah. so this is a different time, you know, mm-hmm. and actors would go into kind of cold reading workshops, kind of like one-off, once-a-week classes. And then sometimes you'd also meet a casting director, you know. Now, this was like, it's become a fuzzy thing where like maybe, you know, the money, who's getting it, whatever. What Here nor there, we're not going to yeah. talk about those politics. We're just going to mention, though, that we met during one of these workshop classes. And mm-hmm. just, again, we'd see each other like once a week. Yuri, I, I think, were you and Tara even married at that time? I want to say. We were. Yeah, we yeah. were already married then. We've been married forever. Yeah. And so Yuri and Tara were just like this great, cute couple who were just friendly. Everyone in this class, it was called, it's called scene work, are just super friendly. And then there's this moment when like maybe like a few months or a year goes by and then you like Google your friend. I guess we didn't even do I am. I guess I am Dean was still a thing back then, too. Right, and you check right. and then you'd be like, oh, oh, he's like a he's a star. Yuri's like a voice. <laughs> I didn't know star. this. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. what? You're like, it's like, you just, when you don't see someone in their like what? normal element, like it was just so interesting. Like we're all actors. Everyone does everything. Stage, mm-hmm. film, TV, voiceover, especially. But it mm-hmm. is kind of like, it, it, it's just, cause I'm also still like baby voiceover actor. So I feel that way. And I even have I Yuri's book. Star. I think, don't I have your book? I have like, I feel like I have a book oh my of God. yours in you, Paris you, or something. Yeah, you, you, you might, you might. Yeah. We, we did write a book and you probably have it. See, so then it was just mm-hmm. kind of like, I remember a friend of mine and I'll end with this, but like, it was just kind of like, oh my God, Yuri and Tara do a lot. And like every so often I'll message him. I'm like, I'm playing you a Spider-Man <laughs> and everything. <laughs> And then, oh, there's Tara as the captain or the detective, you know? Yeah, so it was just yeah. one of those weird things of like, and I had a friend who was in an acting class years ago with um, a one RuPaul Charles, Mr. <laughs> Madam RuPaul. Wow. And he was like, I don't know who that person was. They were just like, hey, RuPaul, will you just do a walk for Henry just to like keep, get this thing? And, and later he was just like, I'm in a class with this person. Um, I think they're like a singer RuPaul. I'm like, what? And then, but that's how I've, I think I've told some voiceover, common voiceover friends, like, oh yeah, I've been like Yuri, Yuri, like I think Lowenthal, years. Lowenthal for like 10, 15, they're like, what? Ben 10? <laughs> so oh my that's God. how I remember. And it was just like, then we just saw each other like literally then, like weekly Thursdays. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was like a weekly day, and you know, it was it was for work, but it also yeah. there was a social aspect to it. Like I liked seeing the people in that class every week, um, and some of us are still friends. Yeah, there's a it was a very I'm from Chicago originally, so for me it kind of had a midwestern quality mm-hmm. of like, mm-hmm. and James, I'm not like this. You know, I'm gonna throw it back to you in that regard, but just like. Yeah. It is a different Midwestern thing, like of like the artsy fartsy, which again, I've even changed my point of view on a lot of this. But back then I was just like, I needed people who would just like, you don't need to be nice to me. You don't need to like break it down just to be like, go faster on this. Look at your scene partner on that. It was just like, that's how we worked in the Midwest, Mm -hmm. like just practical go. Yeah. Hmm. And that's uh, I, I looked through IMDb. I poured over everything trying to find the project that you guys would have worked on together. So that explains it because it wasn't actually, it was this class. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a project. Strangely enough, uh, despite the fact that every time I turn on the TV and my son and I are watching cartoons, Parvesh turns up on all of them. um, (laughs) I, uh, we have not actually worked in a room together. Hmm. Briefly, I think I even came over to your house. You tried to get me on a project years ago yes. i came over to the a place it was like the old hollywood apartment it was just yeah. like and i'm like oh yeah people yuri and tara have a of course they have a voiceover booth right well it was, home. A, it, it was a closet though i think wasn't yeah. it yeah but yeah. still like even before yeah. all the pandemic how we all have yeah to, like, yeah you've got to you've got to have it set up at, at home like yeah and i'm and, and, you and yeah and and, and i think yeah. you know i me having had that set up position be really well to stay working during the pandemic. That's for sure. Um, although I did have to upgrade. Yeah. I had to, of course. Yeah. Hey, you, you both have been pretty Bradley busy. Baker's website. Uh, n- no, but I just worked with you. I, I love D more than I know anything like his, his site. If you know anybody who's, who's in the chat or watching or, or whatever, if you are interested in getting into voice acting or just curious about it, 
go to I want to be a voice actor.com all run together. It's Dee Bradley Baker's website. He's a genius, uh, you know, the kindest human being and uh, you're just, just so talented. Um, and, and he practical just practical tips. Too. Yeah, yeah. Everything from like, OK, do you want to do the four hundred dollars setup? Do you want to do the four thousand dollars setup? He just right. he runs you through it. And yeah. I know, Parvish, you've had I, a lot of on-camera stuff, but you've been, lately, it looks like on your IMDb, you've been doing a lot more voiceover stuff as well. Centaur's World, uh, I watched the preview for that. It looks incredibly fun. All the music yeah, and the singing and everything. And then, yeah, uh, we were everything, watching that this morning. I, Yuri, don't you feel that, like, no matter what, and no matter what you think your musical or voice talent is, 80% of stuff is singing. From children's <laughs> animation to whatever they, I mean, they, or even if it's a show you might not think, I mean, Buffy, Grey's Anatomy yeah. taught us this. Like you're going to do this. Here's right. the musical episode. Here's a musical episode. Yeah, yeah. I have. And I so, have, I will say I'm I'm not a singer, uh, but I have had to sing on uh, on numerous occasions for for projects. Yeah, absolutely. It is the new. It's the. It's just. And, but you're and, yeah, would, and now more than ever, I think. Yeah, and don't I you think feel because, like it's, regardless yeah. of your musicality. If you didn't say like maybe I, I can't like play an instrument or like no right. notes, voice we already know like okay higher pitch lower pitch that's music, right? Music yeah. is just when you when we hold it at a certain point. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, Centaur World is a full on musical. There's it no really, way to say it. it's a, it's a Broadway it musical. So many sparkles. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Just the oh, the music boy. is very fun, but the animation is that 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 wonderful. Yeah. I feel like it's a new style of animation because it it doesn't look as much like other stuff used to it, even in the '90s and the early 2000s. But I see more mm -hmm. of that style of animation, and it's very it draws you right in. So that's got to be a lot of fun. What was what was your reaction, uh, Parvish, when you first saw your character? It was hot. I mean, like <laughs> right? I've never. He has like pecs and everything, and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, now I get it. I get like, oh, then I was even thinking like, maybe I should get like a zebra shirt, you know, for like right. cons or anything. Like, I'm just like, well, maybe mm -hmm. I should like, but it was, the reaction is always just like, that's, it also, uh, if they don't give you a visual or an artist rendering of the mm -hmm. character first, that's great. We get it. We can come off of description, but when you see, you know, the total collaboration, because like, I don't yeah. own any, none of us own like the, you know, how some people are like, I play Tevya. Oh, dude, this is my role. No, yeah, it's such when by the time Yuri and I are brought on, we're like two years, three years in yeah. the process. So when you do get that artist's visual rendering of the character, you're like, oh my gosh, thank you for doing 80% of the work. Let me just fill in the 20%. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is definitely a, a group effort across everything that in animation and games, I mean, you know, movie making and TV and everything. I think it's one of the reasons I love this business is the family that you create or the family that you become a part of when you when you work on something like this. Um, and, Yuri, may and, I ask uh, you a question? Yeah, yeah. I'm very curious because we haven't gone down like history like this before. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. I'm curious, what was your big, what was your biggest voiceover job where you felt like I've been climbing up this mountain and then you got that gig that made you be like, oh, I'm I'm a part of this. I am I am someone who brings this or like, you know, yeah. like I like a, your big break, so to speak, where like I was yeah. just talking to a bestie saying like, oh, it was at age 31 or 35 where I could rely solely on acting to yeah. pay my life. So do you have a moment like that? I, yeah, I was in my 30s, too. I if I had to sort of choose one because, you know, this business is so weird, like you can have a great gig and then not work for three years. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? That's such a weird, you know, people are like, you must be, you know, famous and, you know, rich and, you know, all this. And but people don't understand sort of the complexity of it. But I think when I got my first like regular um, role on an on a original animated show for Warner Brothers, I think it was Legion of Superheroes. Mm. And I got, I got cast as Superman. And I, like, I couldn't believe that that was real. Um, and then, and we were going in weekly and I was working with people who had, you know, worked in the business for years and years and years and whose work I had enjoyed, you know, watching cartoons and, you know, people from other shows that I'd watched. And you know, I think what, as soon as I was working in the, in that crowd on a show where I wasn't just, you know, a day player, um, where I just one episode and, and out, um, 
I think that might have been it for me. Also, just because I'm a, a huge nerd, I mean, like I'm like, well, I'm get I, I get to play Superman. Like, yeah. is it all just it's just downhill from here, right? I mean, there's no. <laughs> I mean, do I retire? I just started, you know. So now is yeah, that weird? That. Also, because you play iconic. You know, like the characters that we all, let alone the three of us, the millions out there have grown up with. Where, like, even when I when I think of Julius James for like Center World, like I'm great when I get to create a character, yeah, or it's yeah. a new one. It's just nothing. You, mm-hmm. Yuri, played these iconic things, like even like you know, Steve Bloom when he's Wolverine. I'm like, yeah, good good luck. Have fun <laughs> right. with those shoes, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, and I think because you know, I have a history with these characters and this stuff and I love, I love them so much. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, at, at once thrilling to, to get to do that, to get to step, you know, either into the boots or, you know, to, to wear the mask, uh, and, and uh, alternatively terrifying, um, because there's so much weight, you know, and there's such a history to those, to those characters. And you know what the, what fandom is like, you're like, I don't want to mess this up. Yeah. Like I could be, you know, I could be the guy who ruins Spider-Man for new generation or, you know, whatever that is. Mm. Uh, so, so there's a lot of, you know, on one hand I get to, you know, check that off my list. I'm like, <laughs> I got to play <laughs> Jimmy Olsen, you know, or, right, right. you know, Robin or whatever. Uh, but then there's a, like, I feel a lot of pressure and that's when I have to come back to the, what, what you were just talking about Parvesh, which is look so much, you know, what what we end up putting in in that mo you know in in our part is such a small part of the it doesn't rest on my shoulders to be honest sure. um I, I i give what you know i can give to it but there are so many other people involved who are working you know so hard to 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 make it great and and i know that you know and that that make that feels like it takes the pressure off a little bit for me I mean, if I yeah, can, just ask you guys to pause one moment. I'm going to take a quick kids. commercial break. Uh, yes, gonna sure, sure. This, I'm going to so. I'm to work on my lighting. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and we're going to take a, while while Parvish works on his lighting, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll come right back and chat more with Yuri Lowenthal and Parvish Chena. Please stand by. Hi, this is George Newburn, the voice of Superman. You are listening to Geek to Me Radio. We just got done talking about Superman. I had to play another Superman, uh, George Newbern. I want to take this time to talk to you about our movie theater sponsor. Our official movie sponsor at Geeks Me Radio is Marcus Theaters. MarcusTheaters.com is the website. If you have been wanting to go back to the movies, Marcus Theaters is making it safe to do that. They've taken all sorts of cleaning precautions. You can download the app for your smartphone, and you can actually order your concessions ahead of time for a more contactless experience. You can find the location closest to you. Movie theater is one of the biggest things I missed during the pandemic, and I was so glad when they came back. And I got I saw Shang Chi on the big screen. I loved it. I'm waiting to go see it again in IMAX. Uh, there's a lot of great movies. It almost feels like we're getting back into that season with Halloween Kills will be coming out with Jamie Lee Curtis. A lot of great stuff to be seen. And the best way to do it is in the best possible surroundings with the best screen, the best sound, the best concessions. Go to the website MarcusTheaters.com. You can become a magical movie reward subscriber, which means you get rewards and points for going to see movies and getting concessions. So the more you see, the more you eat, like I do, the popcorn and the snow caps, uh, the more you'll build up points so you can go see more movies and get more snow caps. And it's just this lovely circle of movie theater goodness. Check out the website once again, MarcusTheaters.com and find the location for the Marcus Theaters or the movie tavern closest to you marcus theaters for the best movie going experience in the galaxy we're chatting for the rest of the hour here with yuri lowenthal and parvish gina and one of the things i want to talk about uh we came back with george newburn as superman there because you mentioned playing superman in legion of superheroes yuri and you're doing it again in the injustice movie that comes out in october and you've got wow. he-man and well, I'm adam not playing, i'm not playing superman in that but no you're I am playing, playing flash several, and mirror master yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. kind of cool that you're in, in that superhero realm again. And then Masters of the Universe, you're Adam, you're He-Man. That's a, I mean, it's got to be amazing to be playing all these characters that I know were, were close in age. You grew up kind of playing with and watching. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, again, you know, a terrifying thing. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm both, you know, happy again and terrified that it's sort of a, a reboot because you were sort of starting fresh. There's, you know, we don't have to step into to anything that's really well, well-worn. Um, and yet, because the you know the fan base is so rabid, 
I'm sure there's going to be a, a section of it that's going to be like, you you guys, it's it's you know it's completely different, and I hate it. So um, we just had to sort of you know go into it you know trusting you know, and it was it was a lot of fun. The the cast is extraordinary, and and I think several people that you wouldn't right off the bat recognize after after you watch this show, you'll prop they'll probably blow up. I mean they're. they're there are some exceedingly good people on the show, as well as, you know, some regular heavy hitters that you see. A newcomer know, named you know, Tom Kenny generation. getting his start in this one. I love to see that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Tom Kenny, that kid's going to go somewhere. He's got a great future in front now. of him. <laughs> yeah. But that's very exciting oh to see. Yeah. And I know, Parvish, one of the things I want to talk to you about, too, because it makes me so mad. I actually went on a tear about uh, all the shows that were canceled by NBC that should have gotten at least four, five, six more seasons. And this year, 2021, we are at the 10-year anniversary of the cancellation of Outsourced, which I love that show. That had to be heartbreaking for you, I'm sure, being part of that show, getting picked up for the full season, then just to have it canceled. What What are your thoughts when you look back on that? Again, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years ago, but what what, do you, what, what are your thoughts 10 years back looking on the show? I mean, I, I'm just filled with gratitude, to be honest, because 22 episodes on network TV is still a feat. You know, like even we, over the years, like we've shifted Comedy, I think even as equally as much as drama has shifted to like the 13, 10, 8, 6, right. be it the British, Australian, or just the streaming model. So I'm always grateful that we told that story over 22 episodes. Um, I do think like people were very sensitive. Like I felt like a lot of the people who were like, oh my God, this show's racist, were like white friends. And I'd be like, well, um, <laughs> can we have this? Can we just keep this Please one? let me have this. Please. No, you, are you offended for me? Because, you know, my relatives back in India are like, right. yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. It, it. And then, he, and on the flip, <laughs> which is true, because like any minority also doesn't want to be portrayed as the, a fool or buffoon. But in comedy, you have to have like, the like I'm a clown. Otherwise, like, then what can I do? You know, if I'm already like a short, big nose, you know, hairy brown kid. <laughs> and again, mind you, the self-deprecation take that I put is very like Gen X elder millennial. You know, I have kids younger than me who are like, don't stand for that. Like you're beautiful, body positive, you know, everything like that. So it's shifting. Um, so I think back to like some of those sensitivities that even some other like Daisy friends had were like, why do you have to portray us like this? I'm like, because then it's a drama with hot, beautiful people. You know, or you're right. maybe friends, the TV show, mm -hmm. people who aren't doing well, that's comedy. You know, what happened when everyone right. was successful and they won? The end. So like, right. I do have like my right. own take on comedy in that regard, but yeah. that's being flipped. Like I even do think now in this ultra sensitive environment as it should be, is that this Chicago born kid would not be cast in the Indian show set in India. They mm -hmm. would actually cast people from India for it. So that, you know, it's, it's such a double-edged sword. Like it was, it's a, almost like it's such a time capsule and moment. And I, you know, with all love to my culture, race, background, et cetera, like you have to also let us be false staff and other things. And this is why, bringing it back to voiceover, why voiceover is so joyous and celebrated for, especially queer and people of color and queer people of color, hello, because we can be anything we can finally yeah. be anything. We can be. Yeah. We can also be the good guy, the bad guy, Orco. Only because I auditioned for Orco. That, like you said, this unknown Tom Kenny is going to go play Tom Kenny, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, we get, do love it because we can. God, do so God much. damn it, Parvesh, give that kid a chance, would you? <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. He he really was better than all of us for that one. But I, I'm very grateful. I still talk to the cast. I still talk to everyone. And Anisha is doing company on Broadway with Patti LuPone, and we're going to try to see that in the new year. And one of the things, Riz, too, you got... Uh, Riz, I'm, oh, sorry. Riz, Manji was on that show, right? Yeah. I, I know Riz. I know Riz. Oh, well, you, you tell him I said hi. We, we did theater together back in New York in the, in the day. He was wow. in the very first play that I did in New York. Yeah. The world is so small. I know. But I wouldn't I want to paint it. This big. Yeah. yeah. And I want to yeah. talk to you about Mythic Quest because you showed up in the second season of that, Parvesh, and that was so much fun watching you be Danny Pewdie's evil brother. Uh, that, that had been a lot of fun that, to play that part. It was um, incredibly easy because this is not one of these like BS moments, like, oh, interview BS. Like, 
Danny is literally one of my best friends in life from Chicago days to now. And then the joke was that he didn't even recommend me for the part. It was Megan Gans, the showrunner, uh-huh. who said like, what about your friend Parvesh? And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah great. <laughs> right, and, t- and tell him I, I recommended him. <laughs> <laughs> we also shot, Mythic Quest was also one of those first on-camera shows. They did a quarantine episode, but yep. they went back into in-person mm-hmm. um, filming. And I just remember being so grateful that they had even had spread out all my scenes week by week. And normally I'd be like, no, what? Why can't we have put this all together in you know a few days? Opposite. I got to like go have lunch with Danny like once a week, every week for like about five, six weeks. So I was just, that was such a grateful element too mm-hmm. of like how our work is so social. And I knew that like, okay, at least I get to work with my best friend. I'm already protected and taken care of, especially when I'm showing a different side of my work. You know, I'm cuddly mm-hmm. teddy bear and we played that against type, you know, and we dyed the beer to even make him like softer and friendlier and closer in Danny's uh, age appearance too right. for the character. Yeah. But it was just yeah. such a dream and I'm equally fond of it for getting to play that side, but equally fond to be, to have been working pre-vaccination in our industry. Cause like voiceover, yes, we are very yeah, grateful. Sure. Why James, like you mentioned, like our IMDB is like have some more voice creds than the on camera because we could still do that in our closets during this time. So I'm eternally grateful. I'm sure, you know, you're, you must be oh, too. One, like 1,000%. One, it, it, it just, it was a different pandemic for a lot of us who have the voice credit, you know, who have yeah. that, that yeah. we have that experience versus other friends who are like, I'm an on-camera guest star in drama. Yeah, and everything's what were, shut What were they going to do? Yeah. yeah. So and we are I seeing, say, Yuri mentioned the grateful. comments that are coming in in the chat. So I, I just now opened those. So I apologize for all of you who are watching. But yes, thanks ah. to uh, Brittany. Thanks Hi, to Eva. Eva. Thanks to Heron. And Kevin Leslie said, loved Outsource, uh, especially Gupta. It was their favorite <laughs> character. Um, we're going to take Kevin. another very quick break. It'll be our last break. And then we're going to come back. You guys are still good to stay with us to the end of the hour? Yeah. yeah. Both you're good. Yeah, okay, yeah. perfect. We're going to take that last break, then we'll be right back. Stand by. Hey, this is Yuri Lowenthal, but you may know me recently as Peter Parker slash Spider Man. And you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. sponsor the city of st charles the greater st charles convention and visitors bureau of course you know them from the website discover st charles.com uh it's a wonderful place to hang out if you want to go bike ride the katie trail if you're looking for someplace great to eat and you don't know what you want walk up and down main street you will find something to fit every taste uh this entire area is made up of small businesses and it's so important that we go out and support small businesses so if you're from the greater st louis st charles area make sure you go check out the city of st charles if you're from out of town and maybe you're vaccinated up and you want to get out and be all fancy and go someplace new come visit we got world-class hotels with five-star accommodations we've got bed and breakfast you can rent someplace to get an Airbnb, whatever kind of taste suits your fancy, and there'll be a great time to be had by all. We're coming up on Halloween, which is my favorite season, and they're going to have their big Legends and Lanterns festival going on, so you'll be able to interact with the likes of Baron Samity. You'll be able to talk to all sorts of fantastical creatures like the Phantom of the Opera and Lizzie Borden and have a great time. It's a fun family event, the middle three weekends of October, so definitely come check that out, whether you're local or from out of town. If you want to kind of plan your trip, see what else there is, Go to the website, discoverstcharles.com. That's discoverstcharles.com. We always say it's an historically good time. Joined for the rest of this hour by Yuri and Parvesh talking about their careers. Parvesh, I don't know if you heard Yuri Lowenthal bringing us back from a commercial break there. Before you leave, Yuri, before you, I'm sorry, before you leave, Parvesh, I would love to have you record one of those for me. So if, if you would stay on the yeah, line after the show's over. Of course. And I just saw your cute little doggy. What's the doggy's name? Mr. Beans. Oh, Mr. Beans. I have. Is it is a full man? Full Chihuahua. We think uh, we actually rescue, and we didn't do the DNA thing, so we're just grateful that he likes us. I have a Chihuahua Terrier, right. and his name is Grimlock. <laughs> That's how I feel about my dog. son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm not even sure if he does, but we're, we're going with it. Did and you I have w- pets before the baby. Did I have what? what? Pets? Did you guys have pets before yes, the baby? Yes. Yeah, we had we had a, we had a cat before, and I grew up with dogs. Um, yeah. So, yeah, oh. trying try, try to decide which was easier. Yeah. Changes your life. I never. 
never had a yeah. pet before age 39. And oh, I'm really? Like, what? Yeah. What? This is why I'm so self-involved. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because I've never had to take care of anything. Right. So I've got it no excuse. I've had better. dogs all my yeah. life. Now Absolutely. I'm still terribly self-involved. Yeah. So it's not you know, no excuse. Games, I was gonna say on. you seem. I was gonna say you seem less self-involved than than I used to remember you. Which well, thank is thank you. That's kind of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I want to mention too. Oh, by the I, way, today is National Video Games Day. Uh, so really? happy National Excellent. Video Games Day, to everybody. Right here. And Yuri Lowenthal. Oh. Because you're here, what? Yuri, over 300 video games on your IMDb title, over 300 games you've been a part in, and your very first one, Castlevania Symphony of the Night from back in 1997, and now the newly wow. announced Spider-Man 2, which should be coming out in 2023, so congratulations on that as well. Thank you. I uh, uh, Technically, uh, Castlevania, I... Uh, because of the way they they date things on there, that's when it came out in Japan in Japanese, and and I dubbed it many years later. I was not even in the business oh, wow. of uh, voiceover in 1997, but um, but but thank you. Still, yeah, that might be the the earliest recorded. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, but yes, and I'm, and I'm glad they finally announced Spider Man too. I'm excited for people to. It's not like no, it's not like anybody didn't know that it was going to happen, but it's nice to right. know that we're all on on board for it. So yeah. Who's the main bad guy? And can you tell us how to beat him? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm ter I'll be honest. I'm, these days, I'm terrible at video games. I could not tell you how to beat anything. I didn't even finish the first Spider-Man game, no, um, which, I, is, which is embarrassing. It's, it's hard. hard. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not embarrassing. This is a hard game. It is. Yeah. This is a hard, difficult game. And I even played it on the easy version. And I'm like, all right, I always can you do. do it for me? Oh. Right, right. Can I find a 12-year-old to come in here and do this, this next level for no. me? Seriously, yeah, like, yeah. do you? It, they got better than us. Like, I, my oh, hands yeah. oh, can't yeah. handle it. Yeah, and, I, I don't. I don't have the brain power to to learn complex mechanics to keep things from killing me in a game anymore. I like slow story you games. Guys, I might be. I I found my old Wii. Oh, like not Wii U, the original. But, and I'm like, oh, this is my speed. I should put right? this back up. I think I've got. I think I've got that in my PS2 in a in a box somewhere, and I should just open them and just start playing those games. Yeah, I want to go back yeah. to my original 8-bit Nintendo and just play, like, Russian Attack yeah. and Contra. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. kind of more my speed, yeah. the side-scrollers. Yeah. Before, we, before yeah. I know we're coming up on the end of the hour, so I got a couple uh, bit of housekeeping I want to do. Sure. Right now, if you're mm -hmm. listening to this, if you're on the big 550 KHRS, I have to make it local, and you have to be 21 and older. If you're watching, I've got this awesome Boulevard Space Camper. You heard Adam Hall on the air with us originally mm -hmm. in the first hour, so I'm giving this away to the first person who can call in on the KTRS hotline, 314-931-5877. You call it. No, I call it. You've got to be local. And I call it. You've got to be local. So 314-931-5877, and you have to give me the answer to this question. What show was Parvesh on for one full season that I was devastated that NBC canceled it? You call right now with the answer to that question, and we will hook you up with this Boulevard Brewing Company's Hops, uh, their I, I'm sorry, their IPA, Space Camper Ale. You can see it right there on the screen for you all to behold. So I'll watch the phone lines for that. Um, I'm going to see if I can get some of that. I heard you talking about it earlier. It sounds delicious. I'm an IPA guy, so that uh, that makes me happy. Yeah, and they're based in Kansas City, and they give 7% back to the public uh, So uh, you know, for replanting trees and taking care of the earth. Um, mm -hmm. So actually, you know what? There is a call coming in here real quick. Let me see if I can do this without disconnecting everybody. Do it. KTRS, who's this? Uh, this is Kevin. Kevin, hi. What is the answer to my trivia question? What was the show that Parvesh was on? Did oh, a full that, temp that <laughs> had to be outsourced, right? It was outsourced. Kevin was paying attention the whole time. Look at that. Congratulations. Yeah. Kevin, I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to uh, get your information, and we will make sure that we get this Space Camper IPA to you somehow. So uh, do you? would you like to say anything to Yuri or Parvesh while you're on the phone with them? Other than uh, that so sick I burn? Oh, well, that's, that's what I was going to mention. You already saw it. <laughs> nope. Thank you guys very much. No problem, Kevin. Thanks very much for listening. I'll put, put you on hold. We'll be right with you. All right. Thanks. All right. Well, very cool. We've had a caller. Uh, so we still got some time left to play with. With all the stuff you guys have yeah. been doing, now, obviously, I was one of the questions I was going to ask, and Parvesh already answered, I was going to ask Parvesh if he's a gamer, but you immediately held up the Spider-Man, so you're, you're a gamer. I am. I, believe it or not, Pandemic. I was playing so much. I am old, so I got repetitive stress injury. Oh no! And I no oh, joke do like the yoga on like the fitness app, and I'm like, uh, but I'm always like constantly stretching. Or is it constantly stretching my the my my like thumb and forefinger? So I have to. I can't just like 
mindlessly play Avengers in the, you know, in the training center, their danger room, come on. But, you know, like where, and I'm just like, I like playing Iron Man. So I just like play, uh, but I would play that hours and hours and then typing and writing and on our computers and on our phones all day. And I'm like, oh gosh, it is like the social dilemma said, like these devices and tech are evolved faster than our bodies. Than our bodies, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I have to like, I have to love a game. I have to like take my time with it. That being said, we mainly, we do a lot of Dungeons and Dragons on Discord with friends. That's, that has saved my life which uh, is during amazing the pandemic. Because yeah. it is improv, which like no one told like the improv actors at Second City or any, or UCB, like it's improv with just like your, your style and genre is like medieval dun- wizards and war, you know, like it's so, yeah. it was such an opening to be like, we could have been playing this game with friends doing the make em ups as equally as we do like the musicals at the auditorium, you, we could have come home and worked on these characters too, but it has been a saving grace and I kind of like it because it's all like, it's all online, it's all tech. I like the D&D Beyond and yeah. we've just yeah. been having a great time I, with that. I, I, I've been playing a game with with an old friend who's also a big uh, Chicago improv guy from, from, from the way back. Yeah, um, are they yeah. the dungeon master? No, um, but he's the one who got the game together. Uh, and he and he dungeon masters a lot. Do you know Todd Stashwick? I think I probably know the name. I think probably, did he just yeah. run for like SAG after politics and I don't something? think so. We'll go offline on that. But, but like that's well, yeah, yeah. We'll, like, we'll, we'll take actually, it offline. We don't with, need to. With that, I knew this was going to devolve into just me and Parfait <laughs> talking to each other. Oh yeah, so that's one of the problems with this the live radio that. show. I'm only we're coming up on the end of the time already. I wish I could keep yes, going with yes. you guys for a while. But okay. uh, very quickly, we've got about uh, 45 seconds left. Tell people where they can find you on social media. Parvesh, we'll start with you. Sure, I'm just at Parvesh at, on Twitter or at Parvi on Instagram. And Yuri, um, and I'm 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 at Yuri Lowenthal on Instagram and Twitter, and watch Orbital Redux on Dust. Watch Dust.tv. It's the sci-fi show that I did that's finally out. Dust.tv, Watch it. Orbital, Orbital Redux. Redux. I didn't get to mention that too. We had so much going on, but I'll put a link to that yeah. in the show notes. So if you're watching this, uh, go to the show notes after the fact, and we'll have a link to that. We'll also have a link to Centaur's World because you really should check that out. It's very fun and very funny. Uh, this has been great. Mm-hmm. Let me uh, make sure I'm getting the uh, outro music here so we don't lose my place in line. <laughs> but but uh, Yuri Lowenthal, Parvish Teen, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you both so much. Let's do it again soon. Yeah, thank thanks you, for thank bringing us back together. Us. Of course, thank you. And for those of you listening, I want to make sure you check out our sponsors, both Marcus Theaters and the City of St. Charles. Thank you all for watching. If you're watching this live on Instagram, on YouTube, all those places, thank you. And until next week, my friends. It's not in the way you watch the flash. It's not in the kids, are your parents about to buy you a shiny new toy from Amazon? Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? Well, don't be selfish. Share some of that money with us. Before going on Amazon, make sure to type in bit.ly slash geek to me in the web browser. It will look just like Amazon.com, except it'll say referral geek to me radio up top. And then when you check out, a tiny percentage will go to support the show without costing you one cent more. So before your parents get you that gizmo, gadget, or widget, make sure they type in bit.ly slash geek to me in the web browser. Bit.ly slash geek to me. Bit.ly slash geek to me.